we are talking about the meaning conveyed by intonation. So there are different opinions about it. One opinion was discussed in the previous module that intonation conveys emotional and attitudinal meaning that that is our attitude towards some person towards something attitude of liking or disliking something our emotions love hatred interest etc this is one opinion and there we also said that the role of non verbal gestures is also important now in this module there is second opinion that meaning of intonation are attached with grammar. Grammar, when we use this term grammar here, it means grammatical forms. The sentence types, this is what we mean by this. These are some sentences. You're a wear wolf. Wear wolf, you know, uh, a kind of character in stories that becomes uh, a wolf uh, when uh, there is full moon. Wear wolf. You're a wear wolf. Now, this is one sentence. I'm a wear wolf. A wear wolf. I thought you are a vampire. You're not a wear wolf. Are you? Yes. You are not a werewolf. Are you? Similarly, you are a werewolf. Aren't you? So, different utterances which you have heard. So, I have uttered them in a very casual style. Let's try to understand here the operation of tones on these utterances and then the meaning these utterances convey. You're a wolf. Actually, this is a statement. You know, questions, when we form questions, we invert auxiliaries. Are here main verb are should be inverted. It should be in front of the sentence if it is a question. But here we have a statement and there is question mark. So in English, the last part of this statement would take a rising, rising tone. And this is shown in the diagram on right side. The first part is taken from some spectrograph with the help of some machine. The utterance was recorded and the, the pattern on machine was made that you see in the upper part of this diagram. But below that diagram, you see a line, a curve that shows how the tone rises across this utterance. So, this is uh, uh, one uh, demonstration or you can say visual presentation of the function of uh, rising tone. I am a werewolf. So, this is just a statement and in statements we have falling tone. So, in the right hand side you see the curve that is going downward. It shows falling tone. A werewolf? I thought you were a vampire. Now, here the style is complicated. The intonation uh, pattern, the pitch pattern is complicated. If you see the curve in the uh, lower part of the diagram on my right side, so you will see that first the curve rises that shows rising of pitch. Then it falls and then it rises. So, this is a rise, fall, 
rise pattern, a complicated pattern. So, it shows a kind of surprise. You are not a werewolf, are you? This is a kind of confirmation. The speaker is getting confirmation from the addressee. Now, here we find a tag question. The question that is tagged after the statement that is called tag question. I have already explained it. If you see its diagram, so here we have two curves. The first curve shows the pitch patterns of the statement, and the second curve shows the pitch pattern of tag question. So, in positive tag question, because here we have are you, so you see the, the, it carries rising, rising tone. The curve shows it. You are a werewolf, aren't you? Now, this time the tag question is negative, and in the right side diagram, the first part shows the pitch pattern of the first half of this uh, sentence and the negative tag is given separately uh, in the second curve and it shows falling pitch pattern, falling tone. So, negative, negative tags take falling tone and positive tags take rising tone. So, this is the summary of uh, these patterns. In English, yes no questions receive a rising tone at the end of the utterance, as you saw in the first example. WH questions receive falling tone. Where are you going? The first part you show, uh, you see, you hear rather, it carries rising tone, and by the end of the utterance, our tone falls. Where are you going? Right. Positive tags, as I have said, receive rising tone at the tag, tag part of in the sentence. Negative tags, they receive falling tone at the tag. In Thai, Thai language, questions have higher tone from start to end. And English has higher tone only at the end of the question. From this point and the previous points, we derive two important points. Number one, use of tones that is called intonation, it varies, number one, across languages. It, this use of tone is not similar in all languages as, uh, as we have seen just two, two languages, Thai and English. So, they differ in their use. And second point is that intonation varies across sentence structure. The type of sentence will take different intonation pattern. Now, the third opinion is that intonation is linked with longer chunks of speech, links with discourse. Tones get different responses from hearers. We use tones in discourse for what purpose? To get response from the hearers, to get a kind of feedback from the hearers. So, this function is performed by tones in discourse. This is the third opinion that it is linked with discourse and it provides certain kind of meaning when we use it in discourse. And what is that certain kind of meaning? It gets feedback of the addressee and we adjust our talk according to the feedback of the hearer or the addressee.
it shows that how our utterance was taken, understood, interpreted, or misinterpreted by the addressee. This is most important thing here, and this is the role. This last one is the role of tones that we are more concerned with in our current debate on the relationship between intonation and gender. Because if you remember, in the previous modules, uh, we have uh, said that it doesn't matter what is said. What matters is how it is said and how it is understood. And when we use intonation in the role of feedback of the addressee, so it relates directly with this point. So we conclude tone of voice has important function in communication, oral communication. It may be associated with a range of emotions and with different types of sentences and with discourse.